Matthews and welcome to Book One O One. Book One One is all about the books that I read for the last four years, and today I have my special guest. She is award-winning author and, of course, best-selling author to no other than Miss Jennifer Brozac. How are you? I'm fabulous like you, Miss Jennifer, and welcome back. And thank you for your time. And can you please introduce yourself? Uh, my name is Jennifer Brozek. I am a full-time author, editor, and media tie-in writer. I have been doing this for over 17 years now. Yes, that's why you are Grand Slam Awardee. So, Miss Jennifer, what books or authors are you currently reading or recommend? Right now, I just finished one of the best novels I've read in a long time. It is by Wole Talabi. It's called uh, Shigiri and the Brass Head of Obafalon. And it is a heist novel. It is a love story. It is set in Africa and also a heist in the middle of the British Museum. If you read American Gods by Neil Gaiman and liked it, you will love this book because it's like American Gods, but set in Africa. Oh, wow. Interesting. I love Amer uh, American Gods, uh, the Amazon version. <laughs> I want to read the book itself. So, Miss Jennifer, how do you approach character development in your stories? In a lot of my stories, uh, I think about the types of characters I want to write about, and I think about the types of situations I want to, to put them in. Um, a lot of times, generalizations will come through, like uh, as the first part of the Mosaic Run um, auditions, I wanted to retell the story of Romeo and Juliet, but I wanted to, to do it with corp kids in um, the sixth world where the, the it's not the families. Well, yes, the families actually hate each other too, but it's the actual corporations who are in conflict with one another as well. So I wanted to see how I could play with that. Um, in the, the next part, um, I wanted, I, I had a character. I grew up very poor. My father was enlisted. We had three kids. So I understood what it was like not to have. And there's this perception of people who are poor that they're automatically drug addicted and terrible people and abusive. And that's just not true. So I wanted to write the story about um, Ridley. Uh, she is in a family, both her parents work two jobs. Um, and it's like, how does she survive? And what happens when she witnesses a crime that she would not have survived if they knew that, that she had witnessed it? And so I wanted to, to pull around characters who that I understand and where they come from and show the world that, yes, there are stereotypes, but most people are by and large good and they are trying to do their best. Certainly. Inspiring, Miss Jennifer, what inspired you to become an author? Uh, I read a book series by the great Susan Cooper called The Dark is Rising. I read it when I was nine years old. And until that point, I did not understand the magic of reading and writing. I didn't really understand why people really got into reading. And then I read The Dark is Rising and whole worlds opened up to me. And from then on, I became, I was a very avid reader. But as I was poor, I had to work my way to go to college and such like that and get scholarships. So I couldn't 
focus on that. It, I've never wanted to be a writer the, my entire life. But when I was in my 30s, I decided that I had stories to tell and I wanted to tell them. And uh, that's, that's how I got into it. Thank you for sharing your talents to the world, Ms. Jennifer. So can you tell us about your writing process? Well, most days, if I'm not on what I call deadline mode, I get up, I do my normal uh, routine, check the internet, make sure nothing's on fire. Um, and then I sit down and I write about a thousand words. I write in the morning and I try to edit in the afternoon. But there is a thing called deadline mode, which I'm actually currently <laughs> on. Deadline mode need, means I need to get at least 2,000 words a day. The internet does not exist until I get those, those uh, 2,000 words a day. Some exceptions like interviews are allowed. Uh, and then I, uh, I often co-write with other people. Uh, which basically means we get on a Zoom call and we all do the Pomodoro technique where you write very focused for 25 minutes and then you take a five minute break and talk to each other and then you all get back to work. And co-working kind of um, hits the mirror neurons and helps you continue to write and want to write. Uh, I do also outline. I always know what I want to write the day before. And when I sit down to write, I edit the last three paragraphs, so I'm in the flow state of where I want to be. Mm, oh, yes, indeed, interesting. So how or what challenges have you faced in your writing career? Well, there, there are times. So I used to say there wasn't a, such a thing as writer's block. Um, there is. Uh, I did get one bout of writer's block uh, when my father died and I, I could not write for about six months. So I did a lot of other things like edit. But I have discovered if I have trouble writing, it means there is a problem with the story that I need to figure out first. Somewhere along the line, either I didn't detail something out that needs to be detailed out. I didn't think... I didn't think through the consequences of a certain action. Uh, so I have to stop and think. And people, a lot of people don't understand that writers spend a lot of time just staring off into space, but they're working very, very hard thinking through their story and trying to find the problem. Why am I having a problem writing this? I, I Last night, I just figured out the problem that uh, I was having with my current manuscript was that I had not actually mapped out the physical terrain of where everything was happening and why, say, the public wasn't coming in to figure, find out why there was things exploding here and there within a park. And I was like, oh, okay. The park is very, very large. So I need to actually set the public area away from the private area where they are and that is the reason we don't have the public interfering. Okay, now I have to go back and add a scene that describes that. So these are things that I have to do is I have to figure out what I what did I do wrong? So Ms. Jennifer, how do you approach research for your books? I do a lot of reading. Uh, I also watch a lot of nonfiction YouTube. If I want to learn how to do something, I will go on YouTube and I will find someone who's all about that. Say, for example, I want to write a character who is a fine art restorer. Well, there is a channel called Bum Gardeners Fine Restorations, Bum Gardeners Restorations, and it is a guy who has been restoring uh, and conserving paintings for over 20 years. It's a family business. And he goes through every step of the process. And it's amazing. Uh, basically, if there's something that involves a skill that I can find or watch an expert, 
I go do that. And I would like to encourage every writer out there, if you, if you know a subject matter expert, go ask them questions. They love talking about the thing they really know what they're, they're doing. So I do a lot of research in uh, watching and listening. Um, and then when I'm in the middle of the novel and I've discovered I didn't do enough research, I will look at maps. Sometimes I use Ask a Librarian. I don't know if you've heard of that. Have you? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> I love Ask a Librarian. What is your favorite book that you have written and why? Well, I've written like 15 novels and it's hard to choose your favorite. Mm. I think it has to be Never Let Me. Never Let Me is a young adult trilogy, actually, but it's released now as an omnibus. Uh, about a 16 year old girl who uh, has mental illness, but it's not the focus of the story. Most kids with mental illness just want to get through the day, but she wakes up and she discovers everybody in her house, everybody in her town and everybody around her is dead, but she's not alone and something is out there hunting her. So with only a voice on the phone, from the Department of Homeland Security to help her. She has to figure out what happened, stop it from happening again, and do it before the monsters get her. Except the entire time she's wondering if she's having a psychotic break. Oh, interesting, Miss Jennifer. So can you share a memorable moment from your writing career? Well, uh, one of the more recent memories that surprised me was I got up, did started my normal day, and my social media blew up with people saying, congratulations, congratulations, congratulations. And I was like, what? What happened? Because I had no idea. And I found out I was shortlisted for the British Fantasy Award. And when people were telling me, they were saying, you got the BFA, you're on the BFA list. I was like, Bachelor of Fine Arts? What is this? <laughs> I had no idea. I, I didn't, I, it wasn't even on my radar. So I had no idea that I could even be nominated. I wasn't, I didn't know I was on the long list and until I was on the short list. I did not win. The, uh, it was a very tough year, but that was... Um, a lovely moment because it, for me, it really came out of the blue and it felt I was, I was very validated in my, my writing and editing career. Definitely being nominated means to say you're one of the best. So Miss Jennifer, what advice do you have for aspiring writers out there? I have two bits of advice. And I always say this, I do get this asked a lot and I will always say the two, same two things. First, don't write what you know, write what you can extrapolate. Write what you know is way too limiting. Extrapolate from what you know, then you can write it. And that's where talking to other people and expert matters, sub subject matters, um, watching YouTube and such, what can you extrapolate from what you know to tell the story only you can tell. And the other piece of advice is, I really is, write what you want to read. The more excited you are about it, the more interested you are about it, that will come through in your writing. And you will always please someone with your story, and that is you. Those are the two pieces of advice I always tell people. Yes, learn from the expert people. But before we go on, Ms. Jennifer, I want to shout out my ranking tops in the last 30 days because in Cameroon, I got number five on the Apple chart, Bhutan at number six, Jamaica at number 12, Cambodia at 31, Taiwan at 43, Zambia at 44, Japan at 49, Malaysia at 66, and of course, in Malawi at 32, Uganda at 55, 
Algeria 76, Kenya 92, and many more. Thank you so much for supporting this podcast because this podcast is created by power writers all over the world like Miss Jennifer Brozak. Jennifer, let's talk about your uh, shadow run, a mosaic okay. run collection. How did you craft it? Okay, so Shadowrun is what's called a uh, it's uh, a tie-in fiction book that one that I've that's coming out on the fifteenth. Uh, Shadowrun, think of it as the Matrix meets um, Blade Runner meets Tolkien. Oh wow! It's cyberpunk <laughs> in the future with magic, and this has been around since nineteen eighty. And so I write for the the, the game. Uh, you don't need to know anything about the game to read any of the books. But the Mosaic Run or Shadow Run Auditions uh, is the the book. It is an ensemble piece of four different um, stories that come together because. Uh, each one of these stories, each one of these parts involves a teenager set in this world. I am the only, currently the only young adult writer for Shadowrun. Uh, and this is uh, designed for people who want, who love the Shadowrun world to see how people fall into the shadows, as they say. Because technically, Shadowrunners are criminals. They're, they're the bad guys, but... Many of the bad guys are much like Robin Hood. They, they rob from the rich to give to the poor. And my stories, I got into it at first by editing for them and writing for other games. And then I was able to write some fiction for uh, Seattle 2072. And from there, I was I, I was brought in to write fiction because it had such a big impact with the audience. And now I write novel, novels for them. Wow, congratulations, Miss Jennifer. So this is book four. So from the book one, book two, from the book three, how did you connect each of those series? So interestingly enough, with my Shadow Run, because it is a worldwide um, game. It happens in all parts of the world, and often I'm asked to connect parts of the world that haven't been explored. I Every novel I write is standalone, but it has characters from one book to the other. Like someone who might be a bad guy in book one turns out to be an ally in book two, who turns out to be the protagonist in book three. So it is an ensemble piece. They all of the stories interact by character, if not plot line. But if you read all of the, the different novels, it doesn't have, matter which order you read them in, you will you will connect the dots and you will realize, oh, they got that from there. And oh, that happened because this other thing happened in this other book. And that's what uh, writing in a shared world is supposed to do. It's supposed to connect disparate parts of the world together through its people. So, Miss Jennifer, Shadowrun Auditions, what is the big difference from book one, book two, and book three? Well, uh, books one and two and three are all adult-based novels, whereas this one is the, the, the young adult one. There have been young adults in the other books. This one is focused solely on the young adults and basically their origin stories. Because right now I'm writing the giant heist that all 11 of them are going on. Uh, but that, that is a future uh, story. Uh, the, and the other thing is there is a throughput character for every of all these stories. And you don't know who she is her name's blotter babe based around police blotters uh, she is the the throughput line who connects each 
person in each story to each other and why she has focused on each one of these and what qualities she's looking for and what are the consequences of them working for her. A Mosaic Grand Collection, is it how many series you were gonna accomplish? Uh, there's actually only going to be two novels. So there's four novellas, which is now the novel with the, the throughput line. And then right now, uh, I'm writing the next book. So it, it's, it's officially called a duology, but scheduled for all the novels that I'm supposed to write, I believe it will be a total of six novels because after this, so Mosaic Run, which is the next, the novel I'm writing, then there's Emery Gray, Elf in White, and then I'm co-writing a novella with um, John Helfer's called Game of Shadows. But it, that one is not, it is connected because they're the, like I said, the characters connect the books, but they're all standalone. So right now I have scheduled six novels. Wow, looking forward for that. Miss Jennifer Shodaran Audition, what is the best highlight? The best highlight of auditions. I, I think it has to be in the last story with the in the Kilimanjaro run set set in the uh, Kilimanjaro National Park Reserve. There is a point where it looks like everything is about to be lost and then something comes in to save the day it's been you you it makes perfect sense um but it involves a, a hippo a spirit hippopotamus and it is an amazing scene hippopotamus versus helicopter Oh, interesting people showed around additions. How many days or month you crafted this book? I think all in all, I think it took about five months. And what are your struggles in writing with? Sometimes it's hard to start a, on a blank page and it, and understanding, when I first wrote the first one, A Kiss to Die For, I did not understand that Blotter Babe was going to be my throughput character. In fact, I was only supposed to write the one novella. And then everything opened up to me. And I realized whose story this actually was and why it was happening. And then that required me to write the rest. But because I had written the first one with a very specific set of details, I had to keep those details without breaking the world as I traversed through the different stories across the world. So I had to create um, new jobs within this world that I had not seen before. Uh, I had to keep de uh, descriptions of people correct in a way that was that there were more than one person being blotter babe at, at one time. So they all had to have the same basic descriptions without being the same person. Yes, very well said, Miss Jennifer. But before we go on, I'm inviting you to listen to my other podcast, Food 101, or our third season with Chef Alessandro, one of the best executive chefs in one of the five-star restaurants. In downtown Toronto, please do listen to our latest episode. We talk about our volume 12, Food 101, volume 12, Italian cuisine. Mm. And yes, and plus one more, our books are out, not only one, but 13 volumes, people. Food 101, volume 1, basics until 13 is only the books that you need, how to create a delicious food. Available on Amazon and leading online bookstores worldwide. So, Miss Jennifer, how has your writing evolved over time? Writing is a skill that gets better as you use it. It's like working a muscle. And you to, to write a short story is very different than to write a novel, which is very different than to write a piece of flash fiction. And each one of those 
uh, brings a different tool to your tool chest when you write. And the more you do it, the easier it becomes. The, the more you understand how quickly you have to write to get into a story of a short novel, but how you can breathe into an, a novel and, and allow the descriptions to flow. Uh, it's, the descript it's the difference between knowing how to say, they arrived at the airport and ran to their plane versus an entire description of fighting traffic to get to the airport and then running through the airport and dodging people and getting to the plane just as they're about to close the door. There's, there's very different skills to manage, but the more you use them, the easier it becomes. How do you handle feedback on criticism of your work? Well, um, I think Neil Gaiman said it best. If someone tells you something is wrong, they're probably right. If they tell you how to fix it, they're probably wrong. So when I get feedback, I listen to the feedback and I see what, they're, what the problem that person has. Usually it means I wasn't clear enough in my description in some way, form or fashion, or I forgot a detail. I go back and I add it. Uh, if it is another author trying to put their own authorial voice into it, things, I take back, I take their feedback, but I look and see what serves the story best. Very well said, Miss Jennifer. So how do you approach writing for different genres or audiences? Oh, that one, that one's fun. A lot of times what I will do is uh, if I'm writing um, something like Shadowrun, which is a lot more science fiction, I will be actually reading urban fantasy. But when I write urban fantasy, I'm often reading horror or Western or something. I, I read not the genre that I'm writing in because that... Um, I don't want that to influence my writing too much, but I do want to read and read widely to understand how other people write and how other things are expressed. I also like a lot of um, nonfiction books, uh, like from uh, The Raven Master, um, Chris Skyf, and An Astronaut's Guide to Life on Earth by Christopher Hadfield. You know, books like that, um, I will read in different genres than what I'm writing because it keeps my brain activated. And if it's a very specific technical um, genre, I will actually go and look up and refresh myself on the rules of writing them. For example, Cozy Mysteries. The murder never happens on screen. There's only a certain amount of, of uh, cursing you're allowed. The, the detective, whether it's amateur or professional, can only seem to be in trouble rather than be in trouble and, you know, actually be damaged. Uh, you know, they can have cl close calls, but you can't actually hurt them. Uh, so a cozy mystery has a very specific set of things, whereas a thriller is much more active and, and much more um, the protagonist is always in danger and you can always see it on screen and murders happen on screen. You know, it's, there's a difference between the two. So I, I look up the, the, the rules just to make sure that I have them set in my head. What is something you wish you had when you are first started writing? I wish I knew every bit of advice that I keep hearing. <laughs> someone had told me all this advice is actually opinion based on experience. It's not a rule. It's, it's a guideline and it, your mileage may vary based on what's going on in your life. These are the thing about writing is you should know the rules before you break them. But if you're going to break them, break them with a purpose. No one ever told me that. So all advice is opinion and know the rules before you break them. So you understand why you are breaking them. 
Definitely. So how do you hope your books will be remembered or appreciated by the future generations? You know what? I think I am I am satisfied with people saying they are really entertaining. I don't think I will ever write the great American book. That's that's not who I am. I have had people come and tell me how much my books have affected them and uh, they have appreciated it. Uh, and, you know, once I would like to win one of the big ones, I've been nominated for the Bram Stoker and the Hugo and the British Fantasy Award. One of these days I would like to win one. But overall, I want people to remember me as a very entertaining writer who gave them something to hold on to when things were not fun. Very well said, Miss Jennifer. So can you please invite our listeners to support your Shadowrun Audition and Mosaic Run collection? Already ready for uh, out for pre-order, Shadowrun's Auditions, uh, a Mosaic Run collection, uh, is available everywhere. Amazon, Barnes & Noble, it will be an ebook. it will be um, in paperback. You can actually get a signed copy from me if you go to my, my website, jenniferbrozek.com. There is a link that tells you how to contact my local bookstore so you can order auditions uh, directly from them, and I will go down to the bookstore and sign it for you. So otherwise, I would very much appreciate you uh, following me on social media or following my blog or going on to my monthly newsletter because my PA makes me do it. Uh, yes, people, let's support Miss Jennifer Brozak because if you support her, more, more, more books to come. Body people, see you soon.